with me to introduce myself twice. Um, I can say that I spend most of my time in the office um, working with um, data downloads and uh, data exports to our uh, clients. Um, and um, when you have a data warehouse, uh, as we have, has, as, as, as we have as uh, Nordkart, um, there is a lot of data to collect and a lot of data to organize uh, in databases uh, so that they are easily accessible for everyone within the organization. Uh, and so that everybody knows that we have data on a common structure, so they know how to connect to those data. They're not floating around in files and uh, all kind of different formats uh, that is uh, difficult to access. Uh, so that's basically what I do most of my time. Uh, and every day we download uh, several hundred data sets. There might even be thousands. Uh, I'm not sh sure about the actual number. Um, uh, we, are, we upload them to Norcatch Data Warehouse. And uh, because there are so much data, uh, the processing time is crit very critical uh, because uh, if you don't um, have time uh, or if you run out of time when you are uploading data that is updated every day or even every hour, uh, you, you run into trouble if your job is not finished when you enter the next day. So um, we spend quite a lot of time optimizing our workspaces so that they run more efficiently. And one of the most uh, one of the smartest ways to do that is to use a technique that's, um, that's called parallel processing in FME. Um, it's uh, kind of a very uh, kind of simple technique, I'll say, um, but it really, really uh, speeds up your workspaces. Uh, there are also some other things that we do. Um, APIs, there have been a lot of APIs talk uh, on, um, on this conference, and uh, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about APIs. Uh, because we try more and more to avoid file downloads, and especially file downloads where you have to go through uh, like manual uh, user interfaces and type in uh, a lot of forms, your email address, your address, and all that kind of stuff. And you might even not be able to download uh, files that cover the entire area that you need. Uh, you need to download like 15 to 20 files for uh, just getting one data set due to size limitation and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, we tried more and more to use uh, web services or REST APIs uh, to, um, to download data. Uh, and when you set that up on FME server with scheduled uh, tasking, uh, you have a pretty nice setup uh, that means that everything is automated. You, the only thing you have to do is monitoring those processes and see that everything is going okay. Uh, but then again, back to speed, parallel processing is it's the key to um, uh, make this uh, stuff go uh, fast enough. Um, so um, what we do then is that we, when we are connecting to a REST API, uh, <coughs> we try to um, um, kind of merge uh, the data into groups that we can process separately. Uh, the technique is actually pretty similar to if you were running like eight workspaces on eight computers that were standing next to each other or run it on um, four engines, for example, on FME server. Uh, the technique is basically that um, on uh, your computer, you have uh, a certain number of cores, and each of those cores can probably run two threads. So on my personal computer, I have four cores, both uh, each of them have two threads, which means that I can run eight FME jobs on that computer. So, um, if I want to download, let's say, uh, a data set with 8,000 objects, I can <coughs> split those, uh, that job into eight separate jobs where each job takes down 1,000 objects. And that really speeds up times, time. And you al also, um, especially if, uh, efficient when you are downloading data because you are kind of uh, leaving that uh, heavy task to uh, the API and the database. Uh, from where you download the data. So it's not even faster, it also saves your own resources. Uh, I'm gonna run a couple of small examples uh, just to show you the ID. Uh, what this workspace does uh, is to download a data set from the Norwegian uh, Environment Agency uh, that consists of 3,000, wow, oh, it's not there yet, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, it's gonna come, it was the same yesterday. Hopefully. No? Yeah. 
Yeah, I cheated a little bit here. Um, I run it, and I run it as a regular FME job, uh, which means that I did not run this in, uh, in parallel. Um, what really does the job here is this uh, custom transformer. Um, this tr uh, custom transformer has a parameter that is called parallel processing, and I can choose the parallel processing level. And I've, um, if I set this to no uh, parallelism, it will run as a regular uh, transformer and process um, features one by one. Um, if I set this one to moderate, that means that um, FME will try to uh, use, make use of, um, I think it's um, the number of cores that you have on your computer, but they're only running one thread in each core, so you're actually using half of the resources that you ha have available on your computer using that setting. If you are using aggressive, it will use six threads or 75% of what you have available on your computer. So you can choose the level of um, aggressiveness uh, by setting this parameter. Um, when I run this workspace uh, with no parallelism, it took me like two minutes or something to download um, 4,885 uh, objects, which is actually quite a lot of time. Um, the heavy task here is uh, it's not the object uh, itself. There's not a lot of attributes. I think there are 15 attributes or something, but there is a very, very complex geometry. Uh, so the objects themselves, when you ask the REST API, look something like this when you get the response in JSON. And this is only 1,000 objects because this REST API only lets me download 1,000 objects at a time. So that's why I have to split the job up in a separate task and let one core take care of 1,000, another one take care of 1,000, and another one take care of some other 1,000 objects. And they can run simultaneously. So I'm gonna try to do that. And since I now know uh, approximately how many objects I have, I have 3,699, and when I de-aggregate them in this one, they uh, count up to 4,895. So thi this means that setting the processing level to moderate, that should be enough because I have uh, groups with 1,000 objects, so I only need four groups here. So let's run this thing. And this will take approximately one minute. I don't know if I'm gonna let it uh, run all through, we'll see. But what you can see here in the log file is kind of interesting. Uh, you get a number here. I don't know if you're able to see it. And then you get an arrow right next to the number. And that is the number of processes that has been fired up by FME. And you can go into uh, your task manager and then you will see that you got many FME exit processes here. And each of them take care of 1,000 objects at a time. 1,000 objects, that is actually a very small number. You should, um, depend on your data, of course, you should try to get that number quite a lot higher. I figured out after using this stuff for a while that regular uh, geographic objects with like kind of regular number of attributes, not very complex nested list on that kind of stuff, uh, 10,000 objects, it's a pretty good number. That, that will really speed up, um, speed up the performance. Uh, as we see here, it's not done yet. Um, still going on. Uh, this is actually a real data download from the server in Norway, so it has to go halfway around the earth. It takes some time, uh, but it will be finished in a few seconds. Uh, what I can do, what, oh, <coughs> here we go. Uh, this is done, and um, it took one hour, no, one minute and 20 seconds. So that halves the processing time compared to running it uh, like um, in a regular way. Um, I can do one more thing that shows this a little better. Um, I'm gonna disable this one, and I go right on to my section that is, that was my uh, sheeting part of this workspace if, uh, if the URL hadn't worked or if the internet connection were bad. Uh, I can see that I'm gonna enable all these objects, and this is actually the same technique, just that I use, I use it on a bunch of files that I have locally on my computer. Uh, I run it first with no parallelism, and these are XML files with nested structure, and it's not the fastest format to read. 
And now you can see that objects are coming out of that transformer. It's it's way faster way to, to read data when you first have the files on your computer, but, file, but you have to download them first, which is also a job, so that's not necessarily what you want. But it still takes some time. Um, it's 41, 42, you, you can count that. If I stop this one, and I set this one to aggressive, and I can do that because I know that I have 11 of these files, so I can use the course in a more efficient way. Uh, I start it, and now you can see the difference in speed coming out of that transformer. If you try to count the number of objects coming out of uh, this connection line, you're gonna see it's way faster. Now it's 13, blah, 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 and it's gonna be finished in a couple of seconds. Uh, I think, yeah, here we go. Uh, actually, it was 103,000 objects from a nested XML files in 14 seconds. And that's really fast. I think that's faster than reading it from a Postgres database, for example, if you run it in a single thread. So parallel processing really speeds up uh, your workspaces and try to use this as much as you can. And it, of course, it also works on SMB server. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, this is my last, nah, my second last slides. Uh, this little table, uh, I think it is in the help section of, um, um, yeah, where you find it, help section of any transformer that can use parallel processing. Um, you see where you, how you set, uh, set the parameters of your transformers uh, compared to how many cores you have available. So yeah, you can use this in your own custom transformer or they are built into some of um, the normal transformers in FNO. So use services to access data and use parallel processing to process the data. It saves you a lot of time. Questions? No, oh, it's, ex it's external. It's external. Yeah. It's ex can you basically walk through us, uh, talk you down, if you could, you know, scroll and go through my query that is... Uh, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> and that's, that's, why we, that's why we don't let our own uh, web services access the API directly, okay. because it's not very reliable. It's pretty reliable, so we try to run these jobs at night since we store and index and do a lot of optimizing to the data uh, locally. So that's why we can run it at night. But I wouldn't set up an application that access those data directly on that service. It's the Norwegian Environmental Ag Agency and there are a lot of um, skilled people working there, but it's not a priority for them, I think, to keep this open 24 seven. So it's sometimes done, but normally it works okay. And I will get notifications if something goes wrong with this job. 